American Center of, of Biological Medicine in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, my name is Dr. Dick Tom. I'm one of the co-founders and one of the doctors here at the center. The, our goal is to provide uh, patients with an exceptional experience, uh, like nothing that they've never experienced before uh, when going to a medical facility. You know, our, our role of biological medicine is to uh, restore health and uh, prevent disease as opposed to uh, waiting for a problem to show up and then uh, ultimately try to fix it. So our approach is certainly a little bit different than uh, many people will have experienced uh, have when they go to their doctor. So you know, what is it that we do here at uh, the American Center for Biological Medicine that's, that's different? The, what we're mostly interested in is uh, evaluating uh, a patient's uh, entire body, looking at all their uh, specific organ systems. So we're not specialists, uh, we're generalists. We basically will treat uh, everybody from pregnancy to, you know, to infants, children, teenagers, uh, and everybody to the elderly with the whole gamut of things in between. But theoretically, we don't treat diseases. Uh, what we're really treating uh, is in trying to understand why an individual has a specific type problem. But the focus of that particular presentation, however, is on one of the other videos that uh, you will encourage you to watch. Because today, you know, our focus is not what we do here at the clinic. It's what we are going to recommend that you do as the patient, uh, both you know when you come to the clinic and more importantly when you leave uh, between your visits uh, at the clinic. So. It's important, and this video is, is an attempt to explain to you what your role is going to be, uh, it's part of the role anyway, of the types of things that uh, we have found to be highly successful uh, for patients, you know, when they take our treatment suggestions and recommendations. So what we call those is, we call them basic treatment guidelines. Uh, they are generic uh, type recommendations, although I'm going to go over some of the specifics. And these were, these have following follow uh, what we know as sort of the laws of nature. And they're suggestions to basically enhance uh, how the body works, the physiology of the body through five of our main systems, our digestive system, uh, our, our elimination system, our urinary system, our lungs, our skin, and even our emotional system in our brain. So what our goal of these are is to, is to take specific type therapies that we recommend and have you do these types of things on an ongoing basis at home uh, to be able to achieve your optimal level of performance. So I've broken them down into nine uh, specific areas that uh, you know we have people incorporate into their day-to-day -day life. And so we're going to go over uh, each of these nine uh, in an individual basis. Uh, so the first one is deep breathing. And it's interesting when we think about breathing, for the most part, uh, when you know people breathe, you know, 12 to 15 times a minute, you know, times, <clears throat> times so 60 minutes, times 24 hours. So you breathe several thousand times a day without even realizing it. And many people will breathe, um, unfortunately, mostly from the top of their lung. And they don't really use the entire lung capacity. So deep breathing is, a, is an effort, a conscious effort that will take, you know, with some practice of the ability, those who do yoga or tai chi or qigong, which breathing is basically incorporated into those types of movements, what you're doing is you're filling your entire lung. And as you fill your entire lung, you're also able to uh, let go of a lot of waste products because, you know, vapors from our breath gets rid of the carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is literally how we communicate with the outside world. Because we breathe out carbon dioxide, the trees take it in via photosynthesis, they give us oxygen, and we take that back in. So, and this is potentially the most important thing that we can all do for ourselves on an everyday basis, because the reality is we can't live very long without fresh air. We can live quite a long time without food. We can live fairly lengthy time uh, without water. But we certainly can't live without air. Uh, as we know, if you're in a swimming pool underwater, you can only be there for a certain amount of time before you have to come to the surface uh, to breathe. So that said, uh, breathing is number is the first thing that we are encouraging people to do. And you get in the habit of doing it. And after you practice doing it for a period of time, 
uh, what ends up happening is, is that you start to do it unconsciously. So as we have people sort of practice breathing in, holding their breath, and then slowly breathing out, we have people practice it. The goal is to get to try and do a hundred of these thousands we take every day, just to do a hundred consciously uh, of these deep breaths. And eventually your everyday breathing becomes unconscious and you take deeper and deeper breaths, which is a very healing, it's very relaxing, it's, you know, for people tend to be hyped up, they're basically going to try and calm them down. Uh, water. Uh, water is the type of thing that makes up the greatest proportion of our body, uh, and when you're truly, truly talking uh, just straight water, clean water, uh, not, maybe not, not out of the tap that has chlorine in it, or if you have a water filter, once it comes out of the tap, we basically can remove the chlorine, which is necessary until it gets to the tap, or you're using a filter water, water filter. Uh, so how much water should you drink always becomes you know, an important question for every person and something that we need to be encouraged. Of course, living in Arizona, uh, we need to be more aware of that because of the, the typical heat that we have here. So on an average, you know, a generic type suggestion for many people, you take your body weight, you divide it in half, in pounds, uh, and then basically you drink that many ounces of water throughout the day, ideally equally spaced. As opposed to drinking, you know, large amounts at once, because the body, the water isn't capable of uh, being incorporated into your cells at that point. So the average woman is about 55% water. The average man is about 60% water. And unfortunately, many people, you know, say, "Well, I, never, I don't get thirsty." Uh, by the time you're thirsty, you're already two to three percent dehydrated. So thirst is a sign that comes after the fact, and it's not something that. So you need to be drinking throughout the day, roll water throughout the day, I'm not talking coffee, I'm not talking juice, I'm not talking sodas, you know, alcohol, those sort of come over and above uh, any, any uh, the normal intake of water that uh, basically we're wanting you to drink. What's also of interest, it only takes a 1% dehydration for people to have brain fog, uh, memory uh, issues tend to come up, their mental performance isn't as good, coordination isn't as good, so you know, if you're doing any type of an activity that requires a lot of mental performance, and mental activity, or physical performance, then you know, topping up your fluid, your hydration state, is something that's pretty important. So we have breathing, we have water. Uh, another essential thing in our basic treatment guidelines is movement. You know, we have the, this idea that uh, you know we are quite sedentary. More and more in our society, we have. You know, we have people who do telecommuting, they don't even get out of their house in the morning, they hardly move around, they move from their kitchen to their office, you know, and if, if they do go to a job, they often go from their house to their car, and then they drive there, and then they go in, and then they sit, because many times our occupations are on computers or in, not in an everyday activity. Obviously, some occupations, that's not true, but generally speaking, that's not an uncommon thing. So, people always think about, you know, movement or some form of exercise, oh, i got to go to the gym. Uh, no, you actually don't have to go to the gym. There's lots of things that can be done at home, uh, in fact, encouraged at home, and still the best activity that for anybody to do is simply walking. Uh, you know, people tend to think, well, it's not aerobic enough, but what we're more interested in from a health perspective is not necessarily just looking at cardiovascular fitness, which uh, aerobic exercise is wonderful for. The, the activity of movement is more about how do we move our limbs? How do we get rid of our waste products? And so taking a, a walk with your partner or walking your dog uh, is a type of thing that, you know, on an everyday basis needs to be incorporated into your routine. Uh, if you work in an office building, a good idea is at, at, at break times or at your lunch time is to just walk outside. Uh, you know, and those type of activities are incredibly important, especially if you have an occupation where you sit for extended periods of time. Getting up and moving around is an incredibly important aspect for your lymphatic system, as we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, the next uh, basic treatment guideline is the use of water. In addition to drinking water, which we've just talked about, it's the use of water in other forms. So, you know, one of the ways is taking a shower, of course. So what the recommendation is with a shower, is in order to help your physiology is that after you've taken your shower and you turn your hot water down and you finish your shower with a cool spray. It's very invigorating, uh, it, it 
it uh, will basically help support your uh, endocrine system and sort of get the day started, um, you know, in order to to get moving. Now, in addition to that, there are specific types of hydrotherapy treatments. We can do therapeutic baths. Sometimes we can put herbal medicines in there if they're calming or if there's been a lot of you know, discomfort and achiness of flu. Sometimes we'll put Epsom salts in there. Uh, sometimes if people are having the sinus congestion or a cold or a sore throat, we can use water in the form of gargles and the neti pots and nasal lavages and that type of thing. Uh, we have something called warming socks uh, for people who have a lot of congestion. So there's, a, there's a quite a number of ways that we can incorporate water into our everyday life starting from a simple shower to something, some types of things that are quite specific for any particular health challenge that, that an individual may be having. I mentioned a minute ago the importance of moving uh, the lymph in your body, so we have uh, the deep breathing activity, which we spoke of as one of the ways that we can move our lymph, and so is this daily movement. And your lymphatic system uh, has about three times as much fluid in it as your uh, cardiovascular system. So we have three or four pints of blood, but we have three or four times that amount um, in the fluid uh, in our lymph system. Our lymph system is really how our body detoxes itself, it cleanses itself. And so it's incredibly important that you know the lymph system is moved. People are aware of their lymph system. Uh, if they have a sore throat, they'll often feel that they've swollen lymph nodes, or if it's in their groin area, under their arm, there's been any type of you know breast challenges. If a woman has had breast cancer, often these lymph nodes are removed. One of the issues may be lymph swelling. <coughs> so the lymphatic system covers your entire body. It is it is the most critical system of how our body uh, cleanses itself. So in addition to deep breathing and movement, there's a couple of other activities that we have found have been incredibly important and incredibly helpful for people on an, on an everyday basis. Uh, the first is castor oil packs, uh, which is basically a piece of cotton flannel onto which we put castor oil. We place it as the picture shows over the entire abdomen because about 60% of 70% of our entire lymphatic system, our immune system, lies between the breast bone and the pelvic bone. So this is an area that we're basically supporting as well as our digestive system. People tend to think that a poultice is a pull things out. It's not pulling toxins out. What it is doing is it's increasing your, what we call your lymphocyte traffic. It raises your lymphatic system, and it's your lymphatic system that's doing the cleansing. And that is what is the, the most critical and important. So ideally, we like to have people do this usually in the evening because it's in time of convenience. So they basically take the flannel, they have castor oil on it, they place it over their abdomen uh, for 30 or 40 minutes, uh, depending. Uh, they can be doing other things. They may be resting, they may be you know, reading something, they may be watching their favorite television program. Now when they're done, they just fold it up, put it aside, and you know, the castor oil pack can be used again at another time. Uh, in addition to uh, the castor oil pack, another type of thing is the dry skin brushing. Uh, dry skin brushing <clears throat> is not something that's used to debride the skin. It's not something that's done very vigorously. That's you know that's that there is you can do that in the shower, which is a different uh, procedure. Dry skin brushing is just that it's done dry. I recommend it's done as the last thing you do before you get in bed. So as this diagram shows, it shows us moving it up the body. We're moving it up the legs. We're moving it up the arms. From the head, we're moving it down. Because we're moving it towards the, what's called the thoracic duct, which is about this position on the body. It then moves all the waste products back into your heart to be circulated to your liver, and then to be removed by the, by the urine, by the stool, by, by the lungs, etc. So the key thing about skin, dry skin brushing is the pressure. Most people use too much pressure. This is not, we're not, said we're not debriding, this, we're not trying to take skin cells off. This is a very light, short strokes that if you were to close your eyes, it would feel like there's a feather uh, that basically is just touching your skin. That's the amount of pressure. It can be done relatively quickly. You can do a uh, dry skin brush in 35, 50 seconds, 60 seconds, just these wide strokes, moving it, as I said, ultimately uh, towards your heart. Last thing before you go to bed is the, is the recommended time to be the most effective because in the morning, 
of course, after you've slept, which is another one of our basic treatment guidelines, is with some specific uh, ideas and specific guidelines, uh, it's important that we, and you know, there's so many tens of thousands of studies that have been done on sleep, and we pretty much live, unfortunately, in a sleep-deprived society. Uh, it's well known that we actually need, uh, ideally, seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep for our organ systems to function optimally. Many people say, oh, I don't need that much sleep, and I function just fine on six hours. Well, you may think you're functioning fine, but unfortunately what ends up happening when you do that, uh, you don't you don't totally are not able to totally recover uh, you know, what the body needs and what the body is ultimately doing. And it's between that seventh and eighth hour when you actually get the greatest refreshing, the most refreshing sleep. So if you're not sleeping seven hours, you're actually missing out an important component of what sleep is attempting to do. The ideal time from a physiologic perspective is, as that clock shows, is, a, is between 10 and 11, is the ideal time to be in bed. And in bed, there's no Wi-Fi, you're not looking at an iPad, you're not looking at your iPhone, all that Wi-Fi device is out of the room because we do know that those electromagnetic uh, waves will interfere, can interfere with your sleep itself. Another important thing to consider with sleep is that you should raise the head of your bed about six inches. And when I first learned of this about a year ago, I said, no, that doesn't, you know, don't we want more blood coming into our head at night, you know, because to restore that, and, you know, if we raise the, the, the bed that way, it won't blood be flowing away, which makes sense logically, but if you look at that other picture of the tree, I, my question to you is, how do you think the leaves on that tree get water? When we water our plants, we don't water the leaves, we actually water the ground, and because of osmotic forces and solutes and that type of thing, the, the fluids, the nutrients, will go up into the tree. The same thing happens in our body. We will actually get more relief of head congestion, uh, better blood flow into our head if we raise the head of our bed about six inches. Uh, it's very simple to do, cinder block, or you can get devices to raise it. It's not just tilting the bed, it's actually raising the bed. Uh, that's important. Uh, a couple of final uh, thoughts about sleep is that it's important that you s that sleep is in a pitch black. A pitch black either using an eye mask if you, if you don't have blackout shades or if you have moonlight or whatever. Uh, so, and the reason for that is, is because the darkness is what turns on a hormone, melatonin, uh, during the night. And we want melatonin to be optimal during the night because it's, when it's an important component of our sleep. So in addition to sleeping in the dark, it's also essential on the other side to get sunlight. Uh, sunlight is what turns off uh, the melatonin, and so melatonin can have an effect on your body temperature, it affects your immune system, it's not just about a, it's not just a sleep uh, medication or a sleep hormone, it does a lot of other regulation uh, through our pineal gland, which is where this melatonin is made. We know that sunshine on a daily basis uh, affects so many types of conditions and you know I live in a fortunate place here in Arizona where we get lots of sunshine. Some of you may not be as fortunate where you uh, have exposure to sunlight especially during uh, the winter months uh, in which case it does make sense that you have a, um, a light source. We tend to think of that for seasonal affective disorder but the reality is if, you know, even if you don't have that condition exposure to natural type sunlight ideally outside, but if not through uh, artificial lighting, that is an important component on an everyday basis to try and get your, your body in balance. When we look at what we eat, the, the apple cider vinegar is something that we incorporate, ask people to do. It helps so many different types of conditions. The most important thing about apple cider vinegar is not to make your system acidic, but it's what it's doing and what it has shown, been shown to do over time is it turns on your digestive system. Uh, your digestive system has the ability to, you know, start working and, you know, one of the challenges now with the average of 17 meals per week, unfortunately out of 21 in, in the United States and in Canada, uh, is that those meals are not eaten at home. So people go to drive-bys in the morning when they're on their way to work. Uh, many times, you know, they lunch is out, uh, you know, they're not
not eating it at home, uh, obviously because they're there to work, and then they come home, and then one or two nights a week they're going out to dinner. So there's not a lot of food that's being consumed at home. And you know, like it used to be, you know, 50, 60 years. You know, we've had McDonald's. First McDonald's was opened in 1959 uh, in East in Illinois, I think. Uh, so what we have is we have a lot more of those types of things where people go out to eat. Apple cider vinegar is replacing cooking the food on some level, smelling the food, cooking, and what we're doing is we're stimulating a number of hormone actions to start the whole digestive process. So of course, an incredibly important basic treatment guideline is what do we eat? And you know, the aspect that's individualized, that what is important to look at is that you try and eat the rainbow, you try and eat as many possible colors as possible. Our goal is, is ideally is to eat as many as nine different colors a day. Now, there's many types of diets. You know, when people in the clinic, when we have one-on-one -on -one consultations with our patients, we try and customize that diet specifically to them to what their specific need is. And so we'll make a suggestion. In many cases, food allergies uh, is a component. Uh, we have kits that, uh, that are sent out to where you can do an at home uh, by just doing a finger prick, uh, filling out a card and sending it in. Or of course in the clinic, uh, we can do a blood draw and do a food allergy test uh, for people. So those are some things that, you know, as part of the basic treatment guidelines that we want people to incorporate on a daily basis. And there's a couple of other things that, that will require, you know, taking a supplement. Um, now, probably the most important supplement, and certainly in the last months, if not a few years, that have become, become the prevalence of health is our human microbiome, which is what's going on in our, our, throughout our body. It's not just our digestive tract. Every organ in our body has its own flora associated with it. There are many, many things that influence that flora, uh, that unfortunately decrease the flora, and we know that you know, our digestive flora has a huge impact on our, on our brain. Our, our respiratory flora has a huge impact on the types of diseases in our immune system, those types of things. So as a result of that, uh, it's recommended as part of the basic treatment guidelines uh, that we use uh, additional, in addition to eating foods that have high um, flora, we also do a supplement. So, you know, depending on the individual, we generally are using for whether it's a baby that's breastfed or formula fed or a child uh, or an adult, you know, there's a variety of ones. We use the HMF products because they, they're proven and have been shown to be some of the most effective probiotics out there. There's lots of benefits. Um, more and more research has come up with showing some of the benefits as listed on the slide. Uh, why on an everyday basis probiotics are really an essential component of what it is we're going to do. In addition, in the diet, the other thing that we look at is the importance of essential fatty acids. Uh, they, there's a whole host of reasons that we include nuts and seeds and avocados, uh, fish oil, uh, and other types of uh, coconut oil in our diet. You know, and you know, depending on typically when we're looking at oils, we're looking at EPA, DHA. And depending on a specific need, usually in children, we're more interested in the DHA because it's more specific for the brain. And then for other people, we may do a mix of EPA and DHA because uh, the uh, EPA is more from the aspect of inflammation. And as we age, we tend to have more inflammation that, that's going on. So we have a variety of, of different types of products from for a vegetarian to a child to and all the using everyday fish oil. Uh, depending on the specific case, we may recommend as part of an individual's basic treatment guidelines, uh, perhaps a B vitamin supplement. Uh, Biotone EFA is a supplement that we take at night because it helps to balance a person's cortisol level, which would be at its lowest level, the growth hormone level, which would be its highest. Those are like a teeter-totter and a seesaw, uh, generally speaking. And you know, another important aspect of the basic treatment guideline, last but not least, is we need to do have fun every day. We need to do something that's beyond our daily routine. Uh, you know, you need to whether we call it play or fun, you need to incorporate that into something that you're doing on an everyday basis. So generally, by now, people are saying, oh, "There's no possible way. How could I possibly have time to incorporate those into my already, you know, pretty busy schedule?" And the reality is, you do have time. You absolutely have time. Because most of them, you're already doing. I mean, 
mean, everybody who's watching this is presently breathing. What we're doing is we're basically going to help you understand why the importance of deep breathing. So, no, no more time to do that. <clears throat> you're already drinking water. Now we're just going to make sure that you're drinking the adequate amount for your state of hydration. Uh, you have to walk here and there to move around. So now we're going to incorporate that as part of what you're going to do on an everyday basis. You take a bath, you take a shower on a regular basis. Now we're going to use that from a therapeutic perspective to make it part of your everyday routine. Uh, castor oil packs, uh, dry skin brushing. Dry skin brushing is something that takes less than a minute before you get into bed. Castor oil packs, yes, it may take 30 minutes. However, uh, you can incorporate that into something else that you're doing. If you're watching television for a television show, you've just done your castor oil pack during the same 30 minutes. Uh, we're going to incorporate sleep hygiene, the importance of raising the head of your bed, trying to get to bed between 10 and 11, trying to sleep between 7 and a half and 8 and a half hours is, is the goal from a sleep perspective. Uh, the, the diet will be individualized to you. If food allergies need to be evaluated, then those will be evaluated. Probiotics become now probably the most essential supplement that, in my opinion, everybody needs to be taking. We can find out which one is the best for you. Uh, fish oil or some type of omega-3 oil can be incorporated, once again, to your individual situation. And then you'd have to decide, you know, what you're going to do, uh, you know, for that is the most fun uh, that ultimately you can have. So, what is the action plan? The action plan is, you got to start today. You're already doing seven of these things. Uh, you may not have, obviously, castor oil. You may not have a probiotic or a fish oil right now. But all these other things, you can start incorporating into what you're already doing, just simply by what we've just watched. Uh, we have available, obviously, in the clinic, castor oil, we have flannel, we have a flannel holder, we have a dry skin brush, we have the probiotics, the right ones, uh, we have, uh, you know, healthy fish oil, those are available to be sent. Uh, if you're ready to take the next step into the commitment, have the evaluations uh, that are done uh, that we can see uh, over a period of time, that uh, we can uh, ultimately accomplish that also. And for those of you who send us your info by sending an email to uh, info at the Biomed Center, uh, we will be happily send you a 53-page ebook uh, that basically explains in much more detail than what I just laid out here about the ins and outs of you know why we do these as basic treatment guidelines. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We know that these types of things will be incredibly important in your everyday life. And when you come to see us in the clinic, they will also become an incredibly important component of you know, what you're going to be doing for yourselves. So thanks for listening. Uh, we hope to see you in the clinic uh, sooner than later.